and I'm talking to the star of one of the funniest musicals I've ever seen and I don't say that lightly Brad Oscar nice to talk to you very nice to talk to you this really is incredible this musical I've been seeing theatre now for many many years reviewing it and most of it is very average but this is incredible <laughs> I laughed till I cried you know what it is extraordinary and it amazes me uh, every night you know eight times a week we go out there and uh, it amazes me how the show plays and how uh, it's you know such a joy as an actor to not have to really work to make it work because the material is is so sublime in that way and uh, all that Mel Brooks that whole Mel Brooks sensibility which we have seen on film uh, you know for so many years uh, and how it really translates so well to the stage and how smart uh, everyone putting this together was to uh, to make it come alive that way on stage you're an amazing performer yourself, and I have to say, of all the shows I've seen, I think you probably work the hardest, because you're on for nearly all of the show, and it's quite high energy, isn't it? Yeah, it's. I've never done anything like it in my life. It is, uh, yes, it's It's a bit relentless. I mean, I think I have about seven minutes of downtime in Act 1, and maybe about ten minutes in Act 2. Um, and yeah, I've never done anything, uh, yes, this challenging or exhausting. And again, I come back to the fact that because the material is so good, um, it, it supports you in such a way that uh, you just sort of take the ride. And I can't, and I, I rarely have time to even stop and think about how tired I am or how exhausted I am sometimes in the middle of a show because you can't, you know, you don't stop the train, you just keep on going. Uh, and also, it is such a joy to be a part of, of this show and what the show has become. Uh, it's everything I ever dreamed of. So that really, you know, has been keeping me going as well. One thing that really dawned on me in this performance is you must have to know each word back to front to, to perform this musical so brilliantly because you're continually on the move. It's not like you're sat behind a desk for the two and a half hours. You're actually always moving, right. always talking and using props as well. Most actors couldn't cope yeah. with that. Right. Well, you know, you get it into your body. I mean, I have always found as an actor that, uh, you know, through the rehearsal process or through any process you take to learn a role, um, that the, the muscle memory, you know, getting it into your body in that way obviously learning the lines and 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 being able to uh then work off that and not have to think about what am i doing next where am i going um and now that i've been playing the role for well over six months it uh, it really is totally ingrained in my being and i uh and I rarely, although there are those moments, because when you do something eight times a week and you do sort of uh, not go on automatic pilot as much as just trust that everything is there, and there will be the occasional moment when I will think, oh my God, what is my next line? And uh, But fortunately, it has come to me. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking yesterday, I mean, I saw the second performance of yesterday's um, yeah. grueling endeavor for you. And I thought to myself, so at some point, you must meet yourself coming back on the stage from a different performance and wonder whether you're in uh, the first show, the second show, yeah. or which act you're in. Yeah, it is. Doing it twice in a day is 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 quite a bear. It is. And uh, there are moments right before I come on stage for that second show uh, when I literally think, how am I going to do this? How am I going to get through three more hours? But again, like I said, you just jump on and, and it goes and... And, and thank God I, uh, I come out the other end. <laughs> Are you like most comedians and performers that you just wait for the laugh? The minute you get that first laugh, you're off and rocking and rolling. Yeah, I mean, this is... Um this show is such a there's such a cyclical an energy that goes between the audience and the performers and uh so it does make it harder on the nights when they tend to be quieter which is again just a random sampling of 1700 people who come together every night and create one sound that we hear on stage and then we judge oh this is a great house not so great oh we hate them whatever but nonetheless i know they're having a good time but yes the more we get from the audience the more we have an exchange of energy uh the easier it is i think the more fun that, that, that we have because let's face it when you don't get the laugh or the laugh is not as big the the natural uh, instinct is to say oh what did i do wrong why wasn't i as funny as i was at the matinee or last night um but i really think that's not the case i just think again it's just it's random and some jokes are going to land on certain nights much stronger than they're going to land the next night yeah how long did you rehearse to get this as so brilliant as you have on stage now um, well, you know, my my story is sort of odd and unique in the sense that I uh, I understudied the role uh, well before taking over. So um, as an understudy, I had uh, you know several 
I don't know, several weeks, maybe two months of, uh, of rehearsals on maybe Thursday and Friday during the day. And all the understudies would come together and we would have understudy rehearsal. Um, the fact is, the first night I went on in front of an audience uh, as an understudy for Nathan Lane, um, I had never really done the whole show on the set with the orchestra with matthew broderick who was playing leo at the time um in costume uh, the lights all those variables that that, that that go into play so it was uh, that first night on was i don't really quite recall a lot of it <laughs> because it was so intense but then the more the more I got to play it, and the more I got to play it with an audience, and the more I got to play it with Matthew, um, then w when I would go on, which, you know, again, was, was infrequent. I would maybe do one or two shows a week, depending on how Nathan was feeling, and then I would go several weeks without doing it at all. So it was a sort of a strange process for me. Now that I've now that I am playing the role and have been doing it so for six months and playing uh, opposite Steven Weber, we have been able to, you know, develop our own thing. And, and I feel that now I have been able to make the role a lot more my own. I mean, it's just more organic. It's more my take on Max than having to go out there and fill what Nathan was doing, which you'd be a fool to try to fill anyway, because it, it was extraordinary. It was definitive. And, um, it, you know, it, it certainly hung over my head for, for a long time. But now I feel a lot more that I have made it my own. And I don't feel, um, again, because I own it, I don't have to compete with that. It's the magic of the musicals on Broadway with me, Alex Belford. We're still here today at The Producers talking to Brad Oscar. And not only is this an award-winning musical, it's a record-breaking musical. 12 Tony Awards, and it's won a Grammy for the score. It is an amazing musical from the film originally by Mel Brooks. And this guy is an amazing talent. One of the funniest men in show business. Surely he has to be. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he's amazing. I mean, you know, I grew up, my parents loved those films, and I grew up uh, watching a lot of those, you know, Blazing Saddles and Young Frankenstein and High Anxiety and and, and certainly the producers. Um, so yeah, to actually now, uh, to get to work on this project, to get to, to meet Mel and sort of get to know him, and, and certainly now that I'm playing Max, to have had a lot of you know direct input from him and a lot of his support and encouragement, it's, uh, yeah, it's overwhelming. You know, when you get to work with one of your idols, is, uh, yeah, it's fantastic. It's almost like a parody in a way, isn't it? I, I remember having a conversation uh, with an actress from Fame, and it's a bit similar, isn't it, about Fame? You, you're you're aspiring to something that you're going to be in real life. With this, you're parodying a play in a play. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is. And but what I think is so special about this is that I mean, yes, it is a parody, and God knows that the, the, the satire is, is so high. But you can feel, I think, underneath it all, how much Mel loves. Uh, loves this whole animal, the musical theater, uh, the theater in general. And so I think, uh, you know, that it is a Valentine to the Broadway musical, as well as, you know, giving a lot of winks and a lot of nudges and yeah, all that. The comedy songs in this are incredible. And just without giving the game away, and I, I don't want to do that, but it's basically about a producer that's trying to get a flop. And he decides to make a production about Hitler mm -hmm. being gay. <laughs> you could be offended by this, but it's done in the most wonderful taste. And I don't know how I sat there laughing so much, thinking that actually, if you think about what you're laughing at, it is quite offensive, right. but he does it so brilliantly. Right, right. Well, I mean, uh, I have often heard that, you know, uh, good comedy has to come out of, you know, great drama, if you will. <laughs> and, uh, and God knows, uh, you know, Mel has obviously talked about this plenty and what what can we do to this man? What can we do to this event in history that has shaped uh, shaped our world? Um, you know, it's done. So Mel's take is, you know what? I'm going to make fun of him. I'm going to mock him. I am going to totally ridicule the entire idea of who who Hitler was. And uh, so then the idea that you have these these two producers, you know, trying to find the worst play ever written to produce uh, to to sell, you know, five thousand percent and thus make all this money. Um, and this is the the play that they stumble on. And then they hire the worst director and they, you know, they hire the worst actors. And 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 then it ends up. <laughs> 
being a smash success is just the ultimate of all ironies. Yeah. My instinct is to want to tell the stories about the different scenes where it's hysterical. We could talk about right. um, a dance in the musical uh, Springtime for Hitler, which mm -hmm. is what the production is that you're hoping is going to flop, right. and you do a certain dance. I can't give the gag away, but that is the funniest right. thing I've ever seen on stage <laughs> ever with the mirror. Yeah, You know, I have to come and see it, but if you can't come over to Broadway to see it, I hear whispers that it could be coming to the West End. Oh. Could be. Oh, yeah, I think it, it definitely will be. I don't, I don't know if uh, dates are set at this point, but uh, oh, yeah, but I certainly think it should come over there and play the West End, of course. Would you like to come with it if it did come over? Uh, yeah, I would love to. Uh, I, I actually, as I had told you, I was just in London a couple weeks ago uh, for the first time, actually, as an adult and uh, had an absolutely fabulous time and, and loved seeing theater in the West End and just walking around the West End and, and taking it in in the way that as a, as a kid, I always used to come to New York City. I was born and raised in Washington, D.C., not that far away. And I would come up here and this was, you know, this was fantasy land to me. This was what I always dreamed of doing and so to to be up here and to walk around broadway and see all the theaters and the marquees and uh and what was great was that you know here i am in my late 30s and i sort of felt the same way a couple of weeks ago walking around the west end and seeing all of those theaters and all of those marquees and and uh, seeing all these great theaters that i've heard so much about but had never actually laid eyes on so uh i i absolutely loved it i, I love the city and i would i would relish the opportunity to work there yeah and you have a you have a joe allen which made me very comfortable as well <laughs> because you know joe allen is one of our big haunts here as well i often go there after the show so it was very comfortable to go and uh, and hang out in joe allen and were you very surprised to see that we had mcdonald's and starbucks oh no not at all i mean the world <laughs> come on the world now is one big mall you had yes you had your mcdonald's your starbucks you love the pizza hut i saw so many pizza huts yes but uh but we certainly don't have the pubs that you have and uh yeah. You see, for me, coming to Broadway is just magical to see the bigness of it and everything. Mm -hmm. Is it similar for you coming over to the West End? Yeah. I mean, it, it was totally to walk down Shaftesbury Avenue. And yeah, I totally loved it. I was totally jazzed by it and saw some great theater, too, which was very exciting. Let's talk a little bit about you. First of all, we, you might hear a rumbling in the back uh, in the back as if there's something uh, brewing in a cauldron. What, what is that thing that's steaming? <laughs> that's my cauldron full. Of, no, that's my humidifier. <laughs> that's my humidifier. It started to get cold here in New York city and uh, and uh, when it tends to get cold it tends to get dry and certainly as a singer and as a as a shouter because god knows i go out there and, and 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 scream a lot um yeah when the air gets very dry it affects my throat it affects my cords i just feel uh, the, the dryness so yes i have a humidifier at home i have a humidifier here in the dressing room so ideally yes to keep things as moist as possible okay well as long as you don't start calling me darling that's the only <laughs> thing because you're sounding like an actor but i don't mind i suppose that's just a in this in this rather loud and um, hysterical musical the producers were here today with Brad Oscar we talked earlier um, about your your aspirations to come to the West End and mm. you, you saw Chitty Chitty Bang Bang when you were over with I Michael Ball did. you were in Aspects of Love with over here yes my first Broadway musical was the uh, yes the American production of Aspects of Love uh, with Michael Ball in uh, which was done here in 1990 yes yeah, so I've known Michael for some time now and I, I see him every couple years uh, when he would get over here to the States or whatever but yes, it was great to see him on stage again. And uh, yeah, yeah, I'm very happy for his success. What kind of pressure is put on you by the media and people making opinion? Because these journalists that come to see these shows, I think it's fair to say, don't necessarily have a, a good sense of humor. Uh, that they're, they're quite critical, more than the general public would be. And they can, certainly in the UK, kill a show dead. Mm -hmm. The exception to the rule is We Were Rocky, which we'll hear from later. Right. Slated by the press, it's the new Queen musical. But it's in fact quite fun. I mean, theatre isn't necessarily meant to be all arty and intelligent right. and educational. It can just be fun, can't it? Right. Right. Oh, yes, of course. I mean, it has to be. It has to, I, you know, I think you have to inspire an audience in some ways. And so, yes, if you're there to just have fun, maybe have some mindless entertainment, maybe get away from uh, your life for, for two hours, for three hours. I think that's, uh, yeah, that's totally justified. And certainly the critics are coming and they're looking at it from a different perspective and they are judging it by a different set of standards. Um, and I'm sure there are plenty of shows, yes, that did, did not run and probably could have found an audience. But, you know, finding an audience can be a tricky thing when the press unanimously says, you know, this is this is ugh, this is drag, whatever. Uh, it takes time to cultivate that. Do you distract yourself with the critics opinions? Do you read them? Do you take it personally or do you just get on and focus on what you're doing on stage? 
Um, well, I do read them because I'm often interested to hear what they have to say, and there are certain writers whose whose opinions I I respect or admire. But uh, you know, that's a double-edged sword because. It, because it is so personal what we do and when you are on the other side of the footlights and you're up there performing in a piece whatever it may be and you um, and you read all these things uh, and you decide maybe what has validity and what doesn't but you know it's all it's it's purely subjective and so it's very dangerous because if it starts to then sway uh, your own opinion of what you're doing or what piece you're in that that I think can be dangerous and uh, and again because it is all purely subjective so one has to to just believe in 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 what one is doing and uh, and sort of stick to your guns in that way. This musical certainly has had amazing reviews and and is critically acclaimed around the world. I was absolutely bowled over by it, and it's been a pleasure talking to you today. It's Brad Oscar, the star of the producers, and uh, thank you very much for talking to us today from the St James Theatre. My pleasure. I look forward to coming back over soon. Yeah, let us know when you do, and uh, we look forward to seeing you on the West End. This is the magic of the musicals on Broadway. We're now going to take a final piece of music uh, before we move on to another production. This is springtime for Hitler. The big, big song from the show, isn't it? Oh, yes. And a 10-minute break for me. <laughs> so you're very relieved. <laughs> exactly. I get to come up to my dressing room. Yes. This is where you smile and get a, a stiff brandy, maybe? Or is it just a, a glass of water? <laughs> it's just water. I do save the brandy till after the performance. It's been a real pleasure talking to you today, Brad. Thanks very much. Thank you.